Hello, we're doing chapter 7, section 7. In this example, we're going to multiply a polynomial by a monomial. And for that vocabulary, you're probably, ah, panicking. Remember, everything we're talking about here are polynomials. Polynomials just have lots of terms. So you can have one term, and we call it a monomial. Mono means one. We could have two terms, which we call it a binomial. Bi means two. We could have a trinomial, and then after that we just stop counting and we just say, all right, now it's a polynomial. So we're referring to all of them as polynomials, all right? So for each of these, and look at all these examples, I have a monomial with just one term multiplied by a polynomial. This one has three terms. Here's a monomial times a binomial, two terms. And here's a monomial times another binomial. How do I know how many terms it has? Well, all the terms are separated by plus or minus signs. And here's the problems we're going to be doing on the second sheet. So here's a trinomial. So I've got uh, addition signs here. Everything's separated by addition signs. Here's a binomial. Here's a binomial. All right, we'll get to that in a second. Basically, you're still going to do what we did in the first video, which is multiply each part. We're going to multiply each monomial by each term, which is in itself just a monomial. It's just I'm going to put them all together with addition signs. This is going to be the best way for you to do this. Different teachers explain this in different ways, but in my experience, I think that if you do the method I'm going to show you, it's going to make a lot more sense. You are probably familiar with multiplication charts, all right? We're going to make a multiplication chart. Some people call this the area method. So I'm going to make I'm going to start off like that, okay? I'm, I'll fill in the rest of the box as I need it. I'm going to put the 5 here, and across the top, I'm going to put 2x squared, x, and of course that's plus x, I just, I'm just not going to put the positive sign in there, and 4, and it looks like I need a little bit further. And then I'll fill in the rest of my chart. And this is a simple 1 by 3 chart. So in this chart, whatever's on the left gets multiplied by whatever's on the right. So if I go to this box, what's on the left gets multiplied by what's above it. 5 times 2x squared, there's no x's here, so I just multiply 5 times 2. And of course, like I said, there's no x's here, so the x to the second power doesn't change. For this box, to the left is a 5, and above it is the x, so I just get 5 times x, which is 5x. And for this box, on the left I get 5, and when I say on the left I mean all the way outside the boxes, not right here, over here. 5 times 4 equals 20. So now I'm going to put this all together and write 10x to the second power plus 5x plus 20. Now you probably are already familiar from middle school with a skill we call distribution. And that's exactly what I used. There's no difference between that and what you already learned. The only, well, okay, sorry. Mathematically, there's no difference. The difference comes from the fact that I'm just using this as a way to organize my, my thinking. That's all it is. It's just a way of organizing your thinking. Different uh, classes use different, like we use tables, we use Venn diagrams, we use different ways of organizing stuff, and this is just one way it's going to help us with, with this. All right, so you can draw your multiplication chart, or if you know about distribution, 5 times 2x squared is 10x squared, 5 times x is 5x, 5 times 4 is 20. What I find with distribution is that the first student, sorry, teachers will tell them first drop the parentheses and then multiply. Because notice I don't have any parentheses, and I think sometimes students here drop the parentheses, and then they only multiply five times two, and, leave, and then they write ten x squared plus x plus four. They forget to multiply five times that and five times that. If you use the box, that might help you remember to do that. All right, let's do this one. So I'll, again, I'm going to write my two x squared y on the outside, and I'm going to write three x. And last time I didn't put the plus signs in between them, and it's okay if you do, there's always a plus sign in front of everything. 
but this time I'm, I am going to put the minus y, the negative y there, because think of it as 3x plus negative y. And if you want to fill in the rest of the box, or the, if you want to fill in the rest of the shape, that's okay. All right. What's on the left? What's above it? 2 times 3 is 6. x squared times x, I have two of them here, one of them here. That's x to the third power. y, there's no y's here, so I still have that, that lonely y right there. It's not being multiplied by anything else. Okay, so far so good. What does that negative mean? That actually means negative 1. So 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 x to the second power, how many x's are up here? There aren't any. So I just get x to the second power, or 2 plus 0 if you want to say that. y times y is y to the second power. So now I'm going to put these together and get 6x to the third power y, subtract 2x to the second power y to the second power. For the last one on this page, a to the second B and 2B to the second power. Fill in my box. All right, now remember, you can always show the hidden stuff. So I have a one right here. Four times one equals four. A times A times A is A to the third power. One plus two equals three. There's no Bs here, but there's a B here, so I still have that B that is, that's being multiplied. All this is multiplied. Everything in here, 4 times 1, A times A times A, and then just B, everything is being multiplied. 4 times 2 is 8. Here's an A, but there's no A's here, so I still have that A, I just don't have any more. There's no B's here, but there's a B to the second power here. So this becomes 4A to the third power B plus 8AB to the second power. All right, hopefully you guys are catching on what, what I'm doing. So this is four x to the second power, x and three. Sometimes I'm not quite sure how big I need to make my box, which is okay if I'm using a pencil, but since I'm not using a pencil, it could be a problem. Two times four times x times x is eight x squared. Two times x is just two x and two times three is six. So I get eight x to the second power plus two x plus six. Three a times b times five a squared plus b. Three times five is 15. And remember, go in alphabetical order. A times A times A is A to the third power. And B times, there's no B up here, so I just get B. Three times one, don't forget the hidden one. Three times one is three. A, there's no A here to change it, so I just get A. And B times B is B to the second power. So 15 A to the third power B plus 3ab to the second power. Notice I kind of like made that slope up a little bit. Sorry about that. All right, and finally for the last one, we're using R's and S's now. We usually don't use S unless it stands for side or something that a variable that would start with the letter S because it looks like a five if we're not careful. R to the second power, S to the second power, times r, and this is plus negative 3s, so I'm going to put negative 3s right there. Five times one is five. r to the second power times r to the first power, two plus one equals three. And s to the second power, there's no s's here, so I just write s to the second power. Now see what I did here? This looks like 35. That's why we don't like using S's. 
so that's negative 3s. 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. r to the second power, there's no r's up here, so I still got my r to the second power. And s to the second, there's two of them, times another s, Let's see if I can squeeze it in here, s to the third power. So I get 5r to the third power, s to the second power, subtract 15 r to the second power, s to the third power. All right, in the next video, not only are we gonna go this way, but we're also gonna go this way. So we're gonna have polynomials times polynomials. See you in that.